Unit Element Method was actually developed in the 40s, and it was called the Matrix Theory of Structural Analysis. And a lot of technical literature started devoting that in the 40s and the 50s. And the big limitation in the 40s and 50s was that it sounded like a really great way to solve things and do things, but you re very rapidly ended up with matrices that you were trying to solve on the order of tens, then hundreds, then thousands of rows and columns. And if you ever took a numerical methods class in college, you probably had to do a Gaussian elimination for at least a six by six matrix at some point, and you know how painful that is. So once you started to get more than six by six and eight by eight and a hundred by a hundred, you really were to the point where without a computer there wasn't a tenable solution to it, even though theoretically it was possible. Fortunately, <clears throat> by the 60s, electronic computers started to come along, and in a conference in 1960, a conference on electronic computation, uh, the term finite element was coined in a paper describing the technique and how you could use it for a plain stress analysis. And with that, in many ways, was sort of the launching of finite elements. Um, soon, a lot of people were taking this structural theory, matrix theory of structural analysis and writing programs that implemented it on these uh, numerical computers that were starting to appear. And by the 70s, a lot of the progenitors of today's programs had appeared, including Ashtran. Programs that are out there today are descendants of these programs, although there's a few new programs that have appeared over the history. Things really got rolling with graphical pre- and post-processors. In the early days of finite elements, you sat down at a keyboard with a big text file and typed in all your node locations and typed in the connectivity of your elements and typed in your material properties. And then you put it into the computer and hoped you'd gotten them all right and often didn't have a way to tell unless your results looked funny. And with graphical preprocessors and better computer hardware with graphics capability in the 80s, the construction of finite element models got much easier and much less prone to human error. Now, that isn't to say that the human error is gone. There's still lots of problems. Um, but a big problem is that models have gotten more and more complex. By the 90s, automatic meshing was a standard feature of pre- and post-processors. And the meshing technology has matured. It has gotten better, it's gotten faster, and computers have gotten better and faster, and it seems that throughout the history of finite elements, the model you're trying to run is too big for the computer you've got, and the preprocessor you have generates a model that's too big for your computer. And that seems to be, no matter how fast computers are, it seems as though that, that trend will continue, is that the state-of-the-art models are too big for the computers of today and have to wait until tomorrow's computers. Of course, when tomorrow comes, the models get bigger. <laughs>